Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 19th on a Friday. The best night of the week because it is a gaming night. And yeah, there's an agreement with that in the background there. Before we jump into the news, just a super quick preamble. And this time when I say super quick, I mean super quick. There's a viewer on this channel, Chris Thorley, who created a 3D printed set of HTC Vive headphones. A pair of headphones to be compatible with that unit. I showed a picture of his prototype. Well, in the mail today, and I'll just do a quick show of this and then a video on it, is the product that he sent me. There's one on each side. You contrast that with the Rift, and it looks freaking cool more on how it sounds later so let's jump into the news guys we have a lot to talk about like pretty much every day this week it's been just a great week for vr news we're gonna start with a little comparison and a few days ago i reported on basically the htc sided love in between them and oculus according to the vp in that article they were talking, they were friends, and uh, there was ongoing communication, right? Contrast that to today's news piece, which has to do with some words from Nate Mitchell. And Nate Mitchell is a VP of product technology for Oculus. And when he was asked his feelings about the Google Daydream, here's what he said. He goes, it amounts to essentially a footnote, right? And he said that they would face tremendous challenge bringing this thing to market. Now, those words ring like the words of a competitor, and it's a little bit of a contrast to, like I said, the HTC sided love in, right? Some of that's perfectly normal. But what really stuck out to me in that article was the last piece. And the last piece said, basically, that Samsung would potentially be helping Google by creating a phone for them. So basically, their phone for the other company. Now let's look at this from Samsung's point of view, right? Samsung, Gear VR, check. Samsung, Oculus Rift, screen, check. Samsung, HTC Vive, screen technology, check. Google Daydream, potentially, check. They are literally everywhere. And when I talked yesterday about, you know, some of these devs and companies being in their own little private sandbox and not wanting to share their toys, that is exactly what Samsung does not appear to be doing. They are pretty much everybody's dance partner. So if you look at this from just like a fiscal business point of view, they are easily in the best position. So kind of neat that that was mentioned in there. Because you got to think, whether it's a love-in, whether it's strained, the lowest common denominator for all of them appears to be, yep, Samsung. Not bad position, Samsung. Well played. The next news piece deals with a Mexican uh, startup called PowerClaw. It's also the name of their product. Now, this thing is, it's a haptic feedback glove, which is literally designed to allow you, the user, to feel the sensations of heat, cold, and even electricity. Yes, this thing will actually shock you if you want it to. Now, there is a way through the SDK, which they will make available ahead of their expected February uh, launch, which is when they're going to start shipping these things. Via that SDK, as a developer, you will be able to shock people. Now, I'm assuming it's going to be very, very, you know, light shock, obviously, because you don't want to be shocking people with heart conditions and pacemakers and all that other kind of stuff. So I'm sure they've thought of that. I really hope they have. As we know more, we will report on that. But these gloves do not look that bad. They do not look that bulky. Description linked to that, to a picture of that actually below. These things look comfortable and not at all power glove bulky, right? 
Next headline deals, this one comes out of Japan uh, via Upload VR as well, about Gundam coming to life with a new virtual reality experience. Now, an employee of mine spent three weeks in Japan, I think in September. Yeah, it was September of last year. Actually, October, pardon me. And he went to the place, which is in Tokyo. It's a plaza. It's called Festival Plaza of Diver City, Tokyo Plaza. And there is a 60-foot tall Gundam suit. Now, he took pictures of this thing. And let me tell you, it looks freaking awesome. He's taken pictures of it from all kinds of uh, different angles. And this thing looks, like I said, it looks great. The VR project is going to be basically, it doesn't sound as much a game as a VR experience. They're going to be charging a thousand yen, which is basically 10 bucks US for what's going to amount to about eight minutes. And I'm going to put the link in the description because there is a hilarious 38 second video out of Japan. Do not ever change Japan. Please don't change. And just like their awesome strange game shows, this thing is just pure win. You've basically got a guy hugging on to whatever the hell seat you sit on for this ride as it rumbles and giant mechs are battling in the background. Like that is just so awesome. Have a look at that. I will have that in the link below. A little rich for my taste, but as a one-time thing, yeah, I'd probably try it. Um, after all, I tried the uh, Madame Tussauds, which was uh, a lot more expensive and really not much longer, maybe like three minutes. So the next one kind of made me chuckle. It deals with the Gear VR and a third party company has created a battery. And if you've ever seen the kind of the beer drink hats, right, where you've got a can of beer, shotgun format with tubes to your mouth so you can drink, right? Kind of those frat hats. That's what this thing looks like. It's literally a cylindrical battery. And this thing is rated $33.50. It's going to retail for about 30 bucks US. But the devs claim, and per usual, the link will be in the description below. The devs claim four additional hours of charge. And that's actually not bad. If you compare to last generation Samsung phones, and I believe the generation before that, I think the five note was compatible or Galaxy, but I could be wrong. Either way, a common complaint on these were the quick charge drains using Gear VR. Like people saying 90 minutes, two hours, just super quick. Something they have remedied with, apparently with the S7 phones, and I can verify that, although I haven't timed it. I probably should have. But it seemed to me like it was five, six hours of charge, right? So anyways, with this battery, you get an additional four. But it literally looks like the beer frat hat, which is kind of hilarious. And they mentioned that in the article. You got to take a look at the picture. Kind of funny. The next story concerns iRacing, which is a game that I paid a lot of attention to when it launched on the Rift. It was also a game that when I didn't have my Rift yet, I couldn't play via Revive Injector with my Vive because to this day, it just, it's not compatible with it. So in September, the devs have stated they're going to launch iRacing for the HTC Vive as well, which should be awesome. Uh, it's not a bad game at all. So you think about it, the racing genre has probably fared the best VR-wise, right? We've got the, uh, oh, which game was that? Not the Derby, Dirt Rally, right? We've got Project Cars. We have iRacing. Not bad. Plus, we have a few simulators. So VR is definitely starting to shape up in terms of a cockpit solution, right? Which is one of the most natural fits, right? Just like a Gundam mech game like the one I just talked about would be. Cockpit games are just awesome natural fits. No difference here. Same idea. Now the last story, it's basically two in one, has to do with the Oculus Touch. And the other day I mentioned some discussions I'd been having with viewers about exactly that, the Oculus Touch. We talked about the magnetic aspect 
And we've covered probably three or four enhancements on this channel regarding the Oculus Touch. And rather than, you know, be a bunch of developer updates or bug fix updates, I'm sure there's still a share of that, a good chunk in there. Most of the updates and revisions to this device have been enhancements, right? The magnet thing that I reported on yesterday, allowing you to put them together, store them better, keep them upright, right? Well, in that tradition, we're hearing about some games that were programmed with Oculus Touch in mind, but launched primarily for the gamepad, or really, that was the only controller you could use. The Climb was one of those. Now, I played that game. The graphics were great. It was polished. It has an element of fun to it, but for me, the gamepad Xbox One controller just didn't work. That controller can work for some games. Absolutely. It does a great job, in my opinion, for E Valkyrie, even though ultimately I'd probably prefer Hotas, but it does a decent job for some games. Not so much for this one. The Oculus Touch apparently so intuitive, which would make sense. It's very much based on gestures, uh, gestures, right? Making gestures. And part of the thing with the climb, if you're having to do that, you're actually lifting your arms, right? To reach out, to grab footholds, handholds. The author of the article stated exactly that, that not only did it enhance the immersion because your arms were more tired than via a gamepad, it just added so much to the overall experience, being able to use the Oculus Touch. So that was one kind of positive article today. And then quickly doubled up with a second positive Oculus Touch article, which had to do with a uh, another game called uh, Crossout, I believe it is. What's the crime? Yes. Now, in this game, and I'm going to double check, I could be off on the game, but it basically they mentioned that Oculus Touch is just super, super intuitive. And I'm actually going to just take a quick look because I want to make sure before I leave that. And sorry, yes, it is called Crossout and it's a driving game. Same idea. And hey, another cockpit style game, right? Coming down the pipe. More details on that game. I know I'm a little sketchy on that, but the point of that is basically the Oculus Touch, how superior the controller is for that game, right? So I think it's going to do fantastic if it lives up to all of this. And I'm beginning to think, you know what? Yes, nine wasted months, right? Wasted in the sense of getting market traction, but not wasted, obviously, in terms of development. If we take them to word that devs have been programming for this thing and in parallel have been creating Oculus Touch support, then I can see games that would really benefit from the immersion of an Oculus Touch controller, right? Like the Climb, are going to help move a lot of these units. Now, it remains to be seen how is it going to fare, right, compared to the HTC Vive, which from day one was bundled. The advantage of that, every game that could support it or should probably does, right? But at the same time, the negative there is they didn't have the ability to keep adding features, right? We're probably going to have to wait for the second revision of the HTC Vive to see Vive enhancements. Of course, other than what can be done driver-wise, right? Via software. So anyways, guys, there you have the news for Friday. I will be back with a video on the headset. Can't wait to try those out some more, share that with you guys. As always, cheers, and we will see you on the flip side.